You can build automated trading systems for stocks, crypto, options, futures, and pretty much any other asset class or derivative very easily now. Trading brokerages around the world have enabled developers to make automated trading systems that can automatically buy or sell instruments on the markets with their APIs. They want more traders for more commissions, so a lot of brokerages have created APIs to allow developers to make automated trading systems. Automated trading systems allow you to write software to enter a position in any instrument on the market. For example, maybe you want to buy Tesla stock on a Monday and sell on a Friday. You could customize your logic to do that with conditions. Or maybe you want to buy stocks that have a positive free cash flow. There's lots of customizations you can do with these automated trading systems, and that's why it's so popular. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the differences of each asset and what it's like to algo trade or to build an automated trading system, the pros and cons of each, and what I trade. So let's get started. First, we'll talk about stocks. You know, stocks are probably the most popular in terms of what's searched on YouTube and on Google, and they allow you to buy a small ownership of your favorite companies. Most brokerages support stocks and automated trading systems, most notably being Interactive Brokers and TD Ameritrade. Other popular brokerages such as Robinhood and Webull don't officially support automated trading systems for stocks. However, some sneaky developers have found ways around that. Those developers have found the internal API for Robinhood and Webull, and technically you could build automated trading systems for both of those platforms. You would just have to use that third-party library to do that. But once again, it's not official. It's not officially supported by Webull or Robinhood, but it is possible to build automated trading systems with stocks for both of those brokerages. One popular brokerage that does not support automated trading systems is Fidelity, which is a little bit weird considering how big of an organization they are, but they do not have an API. They don't have a public API, and thus you cannot build automated trading systems for them. So let's talk about the pros and cons of automated trading systems with stocks. So some of the pros, some brokerages allow zero commission trading, most notably TD Ameritrade. Another pro with stocks is you can trade on margin, but you don't have to. So if you have a good system and it's been working for a long time, you can either size up or start trading on margin, but you're not forced to do that. And thus you don't have to force leverage and you can just use your cash available. Now let's talk about some of the cons. If you're American, you have the pattern day trading rule, which is if you're under $25,000 in your account, you can only make three day trades. This is obviously a con. It limits you to the amount of trades you can have per day. Uh, and thus day trading isn't very popular with, um, automated trading systems and stocks for people under PDT. You would either have to, you know, stay, stick under that rule or have swing trading systems to build your account, or of course, deposit more money to be over that amount. So if you have a small account, it's probably not a good idea to day trade with automated trading systems um, because of this PDT rule. Another issue with stocks is that you're taxed at the highest tax rate if you're holding a position under a year. So you're taxed at that short term capital gains tax um when you're trading stocks once again this is if you're american if you're from a different country then you, you'll probably have different rules um but you are taxed the highest bracket um meaning that you know any profits that you make will be taxed at the maximum um, whereas if you hold a position longer than a year uh, you're taxed at a lower rate at that long-term capital gain so that's something to think about um, and something that also applies to uh, options and other assets as well another con is many of the stocks are correlated meaning if there's a crash pretty much all the stocks go down. Now you could fix this by buying, you know, ETFs in different markets, such as wheat ETFs or oil ETFs that would maybe help, but a lot of the stocks are correlated. So you have to be careful with that. Um, and if you have too many trading systems with too many stocks, um, you know, they could all correlate and you could be down much more than you thought. You won't be as diversified as you think. The last con about stocks is it's hard to short. Sometimes you can't locate shares to short with your brokerages on certain stocks and you do have to pay a borrowing fee if you're holding overnight. Now you can sort of get around this with some of the short ETFs, where if you buy the short ETF, it goes up in value um, if that you know, index is going down. So there is a way around that, but with individual companies, it's harder to short. Next up is futures, which is my favorite, and personally what I trade with my automated trading systems. I personally think that futures are the best for automated trading systems, and I'll tell you in a bit. Futures are derivative financial contracts that obligate parties to buy or sell an asset at a predetermined future price and date. The buyer must purchase or the seller must sell at the underlying asset at the set price, regardless of the current market price at the expiration date. 
Futures can include indexes. You can buy S&P 500 futures. You can buy commodities like oil or natural gas futures, wheat futures, corn futures, currencies, bonds. There's lots of different areas and diversification opportunities with futures, which is why I love Algo Trading futures. Lots of brokerages support automated systems for futures, including interactive brokers, TradeStation, and NinjaTrader, and so much more. One popular brokerage that does not support automated trading systems for futures specifically is TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade allows you to build automated trading systems for stocks and options, but not futures. For some reason, they do not allow you to buy and sell futures with their API. Now you can do it through TOS, through Thinkorswim or through their website, TD Ameritrade, but you cannot do it through their API. So let's talk about the pros and cons of automated trading systems for futures. The first pro is there's very easy ways of getting diversification with trading futures. Like, like I said, you can trade indexes, you can trade commodities, you can easily build systems for oil futures, S&P 500 futures, wheat futures, corn futures, um, US dollar futures, 10 year bond note futures. There's a lot of diversification opportunity with futures and it's a very liquid market. So lots of opportunity there. There's no PDT rule if you're American with futures, so you can day trade to your heart's content. There's also tax benefits if you're American, you're not taxed as high uh, at the maximum rate. Um, if you wanna know the exact tax benefits of futures, I recommend obviously Googling it and talking to an accountant, but there is tax benefits with trading futures over stocks. Futures are leveraged and you only need to put a small amount of capital to buy a full-size futures contract. But that being said, that's a pro and a con, meaning you can lose more money than what you put in or make more money than you put in. So that's something to um, be concerned about and obviously risk manage around, but uh, they are leveraged. So that is a pro and a con. They have a longer trading session. So the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange trades from or normal hours are from 6 p.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern Sunday to Friday. So you have more opportunities to trade, more opportunities to build trading systems for. The last pro is it's easy to go long and short. You know, you don't have to locate shares. You know, you're not locating anything. It's just you're, you're, you're buying or you're shorting that contract. And most markets are very liquid. Um, meaning you can get in out pretty quickly. Now I say most, you know, if you're trading S&P 500 futures, uh, very liquid. If you're trading something like wheat or live cattle futures, um, it's gonna be a bit less liquid and um, might take some more time for either your order to get filled or uh, the spread might be a little bit higher. So what are some of the cons of futures? Obviously I, I talked about leverage where, um, you know, to buy a futures contract, you only need a small amount of capital and the brokerage kind of, you know, provides the rest. Uh, with that being said, you can lose a lot more than what you put in, so um, it can go against you. You have to be very careful. And when you're building automated trading systems, you have to know what's your risk. You know, definitely have a stop loss. What's your drawdown? That sort of stuff. You need to manage your risk accordingly with each of your systems to protect you from that. You know, that that drawdown, that loss, and you know, applying that leverage. You have to be very careful with. And it's not the same as you know buying a stock with cash. Another con of futures is you have to deal with expiration dates. You have to know which um, future date you're buying for that contract. And if you're in a position and that expires, you are gonna have to roll it over, meaning you're gonna have to sell the current contract you're in and buy the next month or next front month contract uh, if you're swing trading, for example. So that's something you have to deal with. You have to understand expiration dates, um, when to roll over and stuff like that. Um, that's definitely a learning curve. It's not very hard to learn, but I would say it's a con because it's something extra you have to learn to apply. The last con of futures is you have slightly higher commissions. Um, there's a bit more commissions with NFA and, and sort of the exchanges. Honestly, it's pretty much negligible, especially with the leverage, but that's something you know I wanted to note in the cons and that's something you're gonna see. There's a bit higher commissions. Next is cryptocurrencies, which is the most widespread instrument to build automated trading systems for. When crypto exchanges came to light and we saw more and more brokerages, a lot of them had APIs. And honestly, I think all of them have APIs. Uh, the most notable being Binance, Coinbase, KuCoin, that sort of stuff. All crypto exchanges seem to have an API, which is great to see. You'll see um, not all stock brokerages or futures brokerages have an API. So I think they really pushed the automated trading systems agenda. Um, and obviously they were new te newer technology, so they were more nimble in building their systems from the ground up where a lot of futures and stock exchanges and brokerages uh, kind of had to take a step back and probably recalibrate their internal systems to allow for automated trading systems and, and exposing their API to the public. So what are some of the pros of automated trading systems for cryptocurrency? So 
Number one, they have the longest trading session, which is pretty much 24 seven. That means there's tons of opportunity to build automated trading systems and to find, you know, potential profitable strategies. Another pro is that there's lots of exchanges to choose from can also be a con because it's unregulated and there's a lot of, you know, scammy exchanges out there that may take your money. Um, but the big ones like Binance, Coinbase are definitely trustworthy and probably exchanges and brokerages to work with. Another pro of trading cryptocurrencies is there's a low capital requirement. For example, you can buy 0.001 of a Bitcoin. And the last pro is that there's relatively low commissions when trading these. Okay, so let's talk about cons about automated trading systems for crypto. Number one is a lot of the coins are correlated. So if Bitcoin or Ethereum are doing poorly, then the rest are doing poorly. So if there's a crypto crash, usually all coins are going down and there's no real way to hedge your risk. So that's something to think about. Another con about cryptocurrencies is it's largely still unregulated and there's a lot of pump and dumps, rug pulls, if you want to call them, where people will hype up a coin and it will dump back to zero. So be very careful when you're building automated trading systems for these cryptocurrencies and you want to look at trustworthy assets such as Bitcoin and Ethereum that are more stable. They're used in a lot of projects and they can't be, you know, pumped and dumped or rug pulled and they have a bit more volume behind them um, that you can actually make some decent systems for. Next up, we have options, which is also very popular and is a derivative just like futures where you buy or sell contracts that give you the right, but not the obligation to purchase a stock at a future price. As a bonus, you can also buy options on futures, which is even more confusing, but most of you know that you can buy options on stocks. And if you want to bet that the value of that asset is going to go up, you buy calls. And if you bet that the asset is going to go down, you buy puts. TD Ameritrade and Interactive Brokers are popular brokerages that allow you to build automated trading systems for options. So let's talk about some of the pros of options. Number one, they're leveraged, which can also be a con, meaning that you only need to use a small amount of money and you could potentially make a lot more and you can also potentially lose a lot more and more than what you put in. Options are easy to go long or short. Once again, if you wanna go long, essentially bet that the asset's gonna go up in price, you buy calls. If you wanna go short, um, you can buy puts. You can build complex uh, trading systems with options where you're buying a combination of puts and calls or selling them. And uh, so you can build um, complex trading systems like R and Condors to hedge your risk. So some of the cons of options, they have the smallest trading session, which is 9.30 to 4 p.m. Eastern, Monday to Friday, at least for Western markets. So you don't have that much opportunity to, to build trading systems for, and you're, you're kind of, you know, you're at the smallest time frame. Once again, I mentioned that they are leveraged, you know, options prices are calculated differently than say a stock price. So, you know, once again, with that leverage, you can lose a lot more than what you put in. Um, so you have to be careful with that and manage your risk. Just like stocks, if you're day trading, options are taxed at the highest bracket, short-term capital gains. So you have to sort of be careful when you're purchasing them. Once again, this is if you're holding a position under a year and um, you sell that position, you're gonna be paying the highest tax. If you're holding it for longer than a year, then it's not as bad. But once again, with futures, just going back to futures, you can still day trade, buy and sell, and you're not taxed as much. Once again, I'd, I recommend looking online for tax benefits of trading futures, but options, if you're holding less than a year, you are taxed at the highest rate. All right, and I have a bonus for you, binary options. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. I'm sure you have heard of binary options. These are a scam. Do not trade these. They are betting against you and they're unregulated. Do not trade binary options. They're a scam. I'll probably make a separate video on them completely, but please do not trade binary options. All right, guys, that's a video. I hope you found some cool facts and differences between different instruments and algo trading. And I hope you found value in this video. We'll see you next week. Bye.